Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the We Knives Magnetron. I have absolutely no idea why they named it that. That is a super aggressive knife and it's almost kind of funny, but it's also kind of cool, right? I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Um, this is a nice knife and there's a lot going on here. It is available. I will link it right down below so that you guys can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that is entirely up to you. Thanks so much to We Knives for sending this in for me to review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. It's definitely not small, not massive, but not small. I'm coming in at about eight and a half, maybe a hair over eight and a half inches. Blade length is absolutely 3.75 and your cutting edge is almost three and a half. It's about 3.35 inches thanks to a generous forward choil. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. Definitely a full size knife. Absolutely uh, the same size overall length as the uh, Rat 1. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Definitely a little larger than the PM2. And then finally, let's put it up against the Benchmade Bugout and the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. So how's the action on this guy? So we knives are made in China. I'm sure that everybody knows that by now. They are definitely one of the nicer uh, production companies out there. They do everything pretty much perfect. Every now and then you get a little bit of goofiness, but it's pretty rare. Um, this, uh, this knife, as far as I can tell, everything is put together super well. And the action is very good. It's very wee, right? I mean, it's good. It's a little bit tight. It'll probably break in really smooth. It doesn't feel like the absolute best thing I've ever felt for the money uh, that they're asking for this knife. But it is absolutely very, very good. I think I just ran over something that broke. I'm not really sure what that noise was. We'll find out if my office chair collapses. Um, but anyways, the action's good. It's nice and smooth, right? It's just that, you know, this, the action on a Wii knife, um, it's, it's like this feels no different than their knives that run in the low to mid 200s. It's just got a lot of special extra stuff going on and that's fine i think that it's it's totally okay and it does everything that it needs to do there are companies competing in the same price point as this that go above and beyond with things that you know people who are actually buying this stuff is the stuff that they care about so uh, the action is good don't get me wrong there it's just it lacks the spice it lasts it, it lacks the zest that I kind of expect and it's just it, it basically just feels exactly the same as any other Wii knife. It just has a lot of aesthetic upgrades, right? Um, but uh, yeah, so the action's fine is what I'm saying. but I, I gotta point this out because this is a freaking expensive knife, right? Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. And by the way, I should have said this in action. The detent is about medium heavy. There is no double clutch and there is plenty of access to the lock bar. Very easy to get your finger in there. So if those are the only things you're worried about, uh, you're going to be happy with this, right? Um, but anyways, it is about the same thickness, yeah, as the Spyderco Para 3. You're going to notice this guy in the pocket. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. It's definitely going to be the closest in the pocket to the PM2, but it will definitely be heavier than the standard PM2 because the standard PM2 comes in G10, right? Uh, it's also pretty darn tall. Uh, between the flipper tab and this peak right here, it does get very tall, about the same, perhaps actually slightly taller than the PM2 or Para 3, so be aware of that. Materials. We are looking at, in this case, a copper foil and carbon fiber combination, which is actually pretty cool. I don't know exactly how well it all matches up with everything else that's going on. This is kind of weird. You know, it's like, it almost looks like we has like a grab bag of things that they do, you know, of like, it's like random color anno, polish it, random inlay material, and then plasma anno, right? And then they just reach in there and they grab a, I mean, well, that's what they came out with. They, they might have like 50 other options, but they just reached in the bag and grabbed it and threw it at this knife, right? It's all its all individually cool. And I, this is really, what I'm saying is really um, subjective, right? The materials are cool. Like the anode, like the bowls that are anode right here, it's cool. 
the copper foil is also cool. I don't know how well it goes. I don't know how well the copper parts of the carbon fiber go with the bronze anno. And then it's black and it's textured, which is its own thing. And then we have a pivot collar that I assume is also anodized titanium. And then we have the actual uh, female end or the Chicago end, I guess, of the um, pivot on this side and the adjustment head on this side have have that sort of plasma anno thing. Not Timascus, the plasma anno. It's really bizarre. I'm not convinced that there was any, they were just like, yeah, whatever. We need to make four different ones. So let's just do wildly different things. For some people, this is going to work. But I feel like in this case, it's less of a well thought out, like, does this all flow together kind of thing. And all of the different variants are kind of like that, right? I think they're just hoping to grab the attention of as many people as possible without, like, trying to make something that all goes together and flows together. It's just really like, blah, you know, like everything just all got stuffed into a cannon and fired at this thing. So, I don't know. You're going to have to make that decision for yourself. I'm just pointing it out. Like, that's the first thing I noticed. It's not like, for example, like on the Xiphius, the one that I have that's blue, and it's got the carbon fiber backspace with the bead blasting, and it's got the um, hand rub satin finished blade. Everything flows really well. Everything looks like it was supposed to be on that knife. This looks like it could have been anything, and they just kind of threw it here, right? Okay, we get it. Um... But we have the copper foil, carbon fiber, and we have titanium, and we have CPM 20 CB because that's what they always use, right? And that's fine. It's all very premium. Um, it's not; These are not inexpensive materials at all. Um, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Is there internal milling? I actually haven't looked yet. No, not really. And it's probably because they had to cut out pockets for the copper carbon fiber. So it's definitely lighter than if they had done this full titanium, right? Um, give me a second here. There we go. Fairly heavy. 5.15 with last minute adjustment. 5.15 ounces. Pretty heavy. Not perfect ratios, but it's not anything insane. A five ounce knife isn't that insane. And honestly, it's balanced right where you would put your index finger. So it's a big knife. It might be heavier than some people are used to carrying. Um, but if you're used to carrying knives of this size, obviously it's not really going to be that, that big of a problem. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. This is a T8. I'm going to guess like other Wii's, everything's going to be T8. We have T8, T8, yeah, it's all going to be T8. Two screws on this side, screw right here, and a hidden screw for the pocket clip, and then there's also the lock bar insert screw, but you're never going to have to take that out. Anybody who does take those out, Stop doing that. Stop. You didn't have a reason to take it out. And you're not, don't do that. Don't take out the lock bar inserts. <laughs> I mean, okay. Maybe there's like one or two people who ever really, they were justified in it. I don't even know why, right? But don't do that. Leave the lock bar insert alone. You don't need to take that thing out and clean it, right? That's just not, it doesn't need to happen. Um, but anyways, yeah, minimal hardware and T8, that's, uh, that's great. That rhymes. I don't know why I said that. I guess just making sure that you know that I'm also aware of it. Anyways, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. That looks like 140 to me. Maybe 145, maybe even 150, right? These things always kind of throw me. Oh boy, it is. It's 100 and says 151,000. It's about 150,000. So, okay. Uh, fairly thick blade. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. Here's uh, probably my favorite part about the knife. It is extremely comfortable. Uh, every area that could be sharp is not. And the pocket clip is milled and it is specific to this knife. Thank you very much, Wee. That is awesome. I definitely, one of the biggest slaps in the face for me was looking at a premium Wii knife that had a pocket clip that was obviously generic and meant to fit a whole bunch of different models. And they were like, but Wee, but it's blue. We made it blue. And on this one, we made it bronze. Yeah. With these nicer knives, with these more expensive knives, they definitely need to have clips that are unique to the design, and that is what we have here. It's also a nice functional clip, and it is milled, not stamped. The backspacer is also uh, milled, which is nice. The ergonomics are very good, and the choke-up spot here is also very good. The thumb ramp is very nice and complements that index finger position. It's really cool. Uh, the texturing is nice, and the inlay work is very nice. It all... 
it just look it, it just looks funky, right? I'm not it, it's weird. I I feel like I'm looking at a chemical spill here. Like a chemical spill that was like outside of a like a Christmas store and like the Christmas like everybody was slipping around and they started knocking stuff down at the Christmas store and so now there's ornaments and and chemicals ever I don't know it's uh, I don't know what I, it's so weird man I'm not really sure what I'm looking at I feel like if they had gone with this like the copper here right and then they had kept this whole black and copper theme throughout the knife it would have been really cool right or use inst here's the thing instead of the copper it, like more of like the uh the uh, the sort of bronze foil our gold foil uh, carbon fiber and then match the anno to it, right? So that you have uh, a distinct theme, right? And same with the pivot. Uh, this this random little bit of plasma, and some people like this. Some people like something different going on with the whole knife, right? And then, you know, what's really funny to me is that there's like, there's like 10 different things going on here and then the blade is like, you know, if someone's like, oh, I can't wait to see the blade. Oh, it's black. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird, man. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's done well. Fit and finish is very good. Ergonomics are very good. It's just bizarre to me. And, you know, I thought, well, maybe I'll look at the other versions and maybe they'll have something a little bit different going on. Nope. In fact, the biggest, the weirdest one, you know, I, I feel like I got... One of those, like playing Double Dragon, have you ever wondered, like for regular Nintendo, have you ever wondered what it would be like to take a spin kick from Billy or Jimmy to the face? Go look at this, but the Damasteel version. They've done the melted American flag carbon fiber inlay with a bunch of other weird stuff and then Damasteel. It just looks like a disaster. It does not, I don't understand. It's also seven hundred and twenty-five dollars. We, you have got to start. You've got to stop trying to charge that much more for Damasteel. Um, maybe they're selling enough of them that that they're you know it, it's tell people are telling them like yeah we're gonna pay this much for it. People, listen. It's still this way. You can still get knives right, and then there's like a special version, and it's the damage steel version, and it's only like one fifty more. I feel like one fifty to one seventy is a reasonable increase for damage steel, um, but not three hundred or four hundred dollars more. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, so it's a, this is an, it's almost a three hundred dollar wait four five six no, it's like three hundred and fifty dollars more for the damage steel one. That red, white, and blue carbon fiber is no. I can't imagine it's no more. It's no more or less expensive than this stuff. In fact, I would assume that the copper foil carbon fiber is a little more expensive. But if you're going to charge that much wheat, you need to be doing zirconium inlays or Timascus inlays, right? Maxace is doing it. Maxace is doing this stuff, right? Uh, and they're not always forking over, you know, Damasteel, but uh, it's all, it's like I said in some of the other Wii videos, if you, you know, if you want to charge that much, give us a different inlay material and then maybe if you have to charge a little bit more, Right, um, but well, not really. Honestly, you know, seven hundred and twenty-five bucks, around seven hundred fifty dollars. We're talking about a Chinese knife, right? A little bit of Timascus or zirconium and the the Damasteel. Then yeah, you know, then I could justify it, right? Uh, but people, companies are just charging way too much for that stuff. So I don't want to focus on that one. I'd rather just focus on this one. I kind of got sidetracked there. Um, the detail's good, flipping action very good, ergonomics very good, cutting edge, it does actually drop down to a pretty darn thin edge. And something that's cool about the knife, and it's a little detail, but now I know that we can do this. And I, I can tell you what would have made a world of difference to me and probably everybody. Look at this. You see what's going on with the flat here? This is actually a satin finished um, DLC, right? This is a shiny finish. See that? Holy crap. We do the whole blade like that. What are you doing messing around with this flat freaking Kershaw, like budget Kershaw finish? Uh, m start making satin black blades. 
Wow, that will go over very, very well, right? I know what they want for this, and I can tell you right now, had the blade and even the frame, if they had done some more polishing on this, holy moly, that would have been a freaking whole different deal. And it may not actually cost them that much more to do it, right? But that makes it stand out. That's what makes it feel special. And for what they want for this, it needs to feel special. This just feels like, okay, this stuff, right? Um, it cuts, it slices, the edge is, you know, symmetrical. The the final apex looks really nice. No nicks, rolls, or anything like that. Typical, right? CPM 20 CV, fine. They run it at 59 to 61 unless it's coated, and then it's 58 to 60. Everybody's heard this is too low, right? 20 CV, M390, 204P, those are all the same steel made by different companies. Crucible for 20 CV, Carpenter for 204P, and Bowler for M390, right? It has the same optimal range. For production knives, I want to see it at 60 to 62. I think the vast majority of people would agree with me. That is just my opinion, right? I'm sure that we and other companies have various reasons for getting it a little bit lower, probably because it's just easier, right? But blah, blah, blah. Um, the blade finish, if if we knives, if you guys are able to do this, do this for the whole blade. This would have looked way, way cooler. That's just my opinion, right? I'm telling you right now, this would have been a freaking absolute freak beast. Cool factor, right? Get rid of the plasma anno, get rid of the carb the the copper foil, and I could keep or take or leave the holes, right? Whatever. The gold flake carbon fiber in here, do the bronze accents, and then that uh, that high polished finish, the whole blade, and I would even consider the frame. Holy crap, that would have been really freaking cool, man. And if you don't like bronze, you don't like black, I mean, you know, fine. Imagine it, whatever, like, like some sort of cobalt blue carbon fiber mix, right? That would look awesome in there, whatever color. Right, but the high polished black finish. I am sick of the just flat finishes, plain bead blasting or just black washed finishes. I, eh, I'm sure they have their place, but not not on this. This this is too much money. That's a, that's a really basic finish. We can get that on way less expensive knives. Right, do something different. Um, that would be my suggestion here. Uh, anyways, I'm being so picky here. We have a. Uh, we got a backspacer, and this backspacer does have a lanyard hole, and that's great, right? Backspacer has a little bit of, you know, how you do's here. It's just something instead of just being a plain backspacer. I appreciate it. It would have been really plain uh, to not put anything there. They got the Wii logo on the clip. I don't really mind that. Decent retention. Nice little ramp there. This is all slightly contoured. They're not flat, which is nice. So it fills the hand um, and also uh, creates for a nice, smooth surface for the pocket clip to ride over. Uh, there is a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. I will point out that it is impressive that they did three separate inlays on this side, not wanting to leave um, the lock bar area just blank, because that usually is what we see. They actually have a tiny inlay for the lock bar, which is pretty cool. I want to give credit where it's due. Um, we have a stop pin that is located in its traditional spot, and it is freaking huge. Wow, that's a big old fat boy. Uh, a little bit of shouldering there. No blade play up, down, left, or right. I think it goes without saying this is running on bearings. No lock stick. No double clutch. No pivot lash. Consistent. A little tight, but consistent. This will break in over time. And a nice clicky detent with absolutely perfect centering and no detent lash. Functionally, fine. Fit and finish, fine. It's all great. It's all exactly what we expect from Wii. The... Choice of the, the materials individually and the, the individual anode, it all looks good, right? It's great, good stuff, right? And it's, you know, this is all this is all still stuff that we kind of expect to see at this territory. I just feel like there were missed opportunities here and there was less attention paid to whether or not all of this stuff actually went together, right? If you're going to sell, like, people buying knives at this territory are not just like, yeah, that... Yes, this material is the, uh, the good for this price range. I will take it on anything. I just, it just, there, it just seems like some of this was weird or I don't want to say lazy. I don't think it's lazy. I just think it's weird, right? We and any other company, I'm telling you, the high polished black finishes are rare. And when people do see them, 
They freaking love them. Uh, reference point, whenever, whenever I show my old Dark Horse Hinder, which has the elusive Black Stonewash DLC, which is different, Hinder fans, from Blackwashed or Battle Black or DLC. It is different from all of those. It's a shiny black finish, which makes people go, ooh, right? The um, CKF Rotten Evo 3.0, the high polish satin DLC, yeah, people go nuts for that, right? Maybe that is a little more expensive, but if, if we're going to be at this tier in a Wii knife, that's the kind of stuff I want to see. Do that. I don't know why companies, I, I'm sure that plenty of companies can do a high polished or satin finish DLC, right? I'm sure they can do it and they don't for some reason. Uh, do it. People, I promise you, will really like it, and it would it would have given this knife a lot more character. As it sits, uh, the base price of these is three hundred and sixty dollars, which is just a lot of money, right? Um, somebody looking for exactly these combinations of materials and this exact color combination, maybe they'll see a little more value in it. I just feel like the vast majority of people will be confused by this knife, and they're not really going to be sure what it is. You know, it just feels like a regular Wii knife. Like a, a regular $225 Wii knife that they just slapped a bunch of weird parts on, right? You ever seen one of those cars and it's like the person who built it like may have had a vision at one point and they did a little bit and then their tastes changed and they like they were like, eh, I'm kind of I, I used to like chrome rims and now I'm into like you know, like like flat black rims, but they had they had already put like a bunch of other chrome parts on their car and it was lime green, right? So then, but they went ahead and put the black rims on there. Like, yeah, I don't really feel like changing the chrome parts. And then at some point, they were like, you know what? I'm into um, I'm into flames now. Um, so I'm gonna put flames on it. But they only did one side, and you go around the other side, and they're like, oh well, I you know I only had enough money for flames on one side. So on this other side, I, I changed phases. I I'm into like, you know, other I'm into other stuff now. Now I'm into like you know like ghosts and ghouls and stuff. And it's just what what happened with this car, right? It's just like, that's what it looks like, is that they built this like over a long period of time, somebody who designed it, and their tastes kept changing. It's very, very weird. Um, high quality knife. If you buy this, it will absolutely feel like it was, you know, it, it's built like a tank, 100%. Fit and finish and overall quality are absolutely there. We does that very, very well. I'm just very confused with the direction of this, and it's just way too expensive. Um, I, I really, there's, there's really nothing here that says that this should be over three hundred dollars. Not, not by a long shot. Uh, this feels very similar to a lot of other two hundred and seventy-five dollar knives in their lineup, and I'm just not, you know, I just don't, I don't know where they're getting this idea that this is a three hundred and sixty dollar knife. But it's cool, right? And to drive this point home. They gave this to me. They sent this to me for free. I get to keep this, right? So you would think that I would want to say really nice things about it. No. Uh, I'm always going to say exactly what I think. And I do like Wii Knives, and they have sent me some incredibly impressive stuff this year, right? But I want to point out the stuff I actually think is impressive, the stuff that I think is actually deserving or close to deserving of the price tag. This is not one of those things. Um, it's, it's just weird. So this is a 23 minute review and it really didn't need to be that long. Sorry. Thank you, Wee Knives, for sending this to me. It's available right now. You guys can go down in the description, use my link and buy it uh, and it'll benefit my channel. But I don't really recommend it. I uh, I think there's lots of other knives out there at this price point that you can get that are substantially better. And, uh, and some of them are actually in Wee's line. If you're going to spend this much money on a knife from Wee, uh, look at the Exciton or the Exciton. Uh, and the Xiphias. I think those are substantially better buys, if not still a little bit overpriced. It's substantially better buys. Um, but yeah, this this one wasn't really for me. I'm not, not really uh, super excited about this one. Um, just trying to be honest. If you bought it and you like it, keep liking it, right? Don't, don't, you know, don't hike your pants up over the bridge of your nose and come tell me what for. It's fine. You can still like it, right? I'm not saying you're a bad person. <laughs> Imaginary arguments. Um, anyways, that's going to be pretty much it today. <laughs> Thanks to those of you who stuck around for the full 25 minute, uh, review. <laughs> it's a weird one. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody. And have a great day.